here, I just have my video. You are out. How did Mike do to have a photo on his? Uh, how we know we are online already? Are we? What's the question? Are we on right online already? Yes. I'm going to turn off Teams. Ah, okay. They said, yes, you are alive. Yeah, good to know. Thank you. <clears throat> So, do, when, when do we, when, when does we start, uh, like, officially? Um, like, when do I talk? Yeah, when, when do we wait for how many people to arrive or something? Uh, we'll probably wait for, I don't know, a couple people. Uh, Ashley will let me know when to okay. do the little introduction. Okay, I think we can get started now. Uh, welcome everyone to the spring quarter lecture. My name is Sophia Gaba. I am a third year undergrad architecture student and the member of the new school lecture committee. While this is our last lecture of the academic year, we are already looking forward to the next year. If you have any ideas or suggestions for next year's lecture speakers, you may find the lecture series survey on social media or send an email to Ashley Wagner or Lucy Campbell with your ideas for next year. 
We are looking forward to our speaker tonight. There will be time at the end of the lecture for a Q&A. So please post your questions in the chat and we'll get to them at the end of the lecture. At this time, it's my pleasure to hand it over to Alan Rosenblum to introduce our speaker. Hello, good evening. Welcome everybody. Glad to have you here. My name is Alan Rosenblum. I am New School faculty and uh, I'm also a coordinator of the foundation course, the first two years of architecture. And uh, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to introduce Giacomo tonight. Um, I have known Giacomo for many years, probably close to 20. And he's a dear friend and uh, also very importantly, the father of Kika, who is a Chihuahua dog, who is uh, my spouses and I, uh, goddaughter, right? So we're kind of uncles, goddaughter, very proud. Um, since I've known Giacomo for, like I said, many, uh, a couple decades at least, I've always been fascinated uh, by his extraordinary capacity of observation. Uh, perhaps, I, I don't know, if, you know, people have like superpowers, no? And I think Jaco has this, uh, we call him Jaco, no? <laughs> Jaco has this, uh, extraordinary uh, capacity for uh, observation that is um, also w w one of the, the virtues is very unprejudiced, no? So it's, it's, it's a, a kind of an unprejudiced talent to look at the world uh, at different scales in different situations um, and, and extract uh, valuable information from from, 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 from from all these observations and catalog them and obsessively apply them to, uh, to his work in countless innumerable iterations. No? So this is this combination of, uh, I think, of extraordinary talents of observation and of, of the capacity to focus and, and, and produce no? uh, uh, iterations of, of, of thought, no? iterations of, uh, of forms, iterations of ideas that get uh, recycled or rehacked no? into, into this uh, sort of uh, production loop, no, I would say. It's very, very uh, it's fascinating because it's, it's, um, it's a really uh, unique way of working. Jump, uh, uh, Jaco's work jumps across scales, like I said, and motivations, uh, like his observations, which are very varied. Uh, they, you know, it's looking at science and it's uh, you know, high, high, uh, high end science or uh, diverse vernacular expressions, informality, uh, cutting edge art and design. And there's this entire uh, constant uh, you know, uh, tornado of, of uh, elements of information and observations and fascinations. Um, right? and, 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 and the work itself is, uh, or at least the outcome of the work, the, the, uh, what is produced, is always uh, between this craft and crafted and engineered, no? There's a level of ingenuity and of, of kind of ad hoc uh, uh, appropriation and, and manipulation. Uh, so there's this, this, this uh, things I admire, no? This is the kind of combination of, of being extremely meticulous, but at the same time, a very matter of fact, no? They're very, very, very familiar. So, um, let me talk about what Jaco has done. No? Jaco, Giacomo Castagnola received his Master of Science in Art, Culture and Technology from the School of Architecture and Planning at MIT, the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2013. And holds a degree in Architecture and Urbanism from Ricardo Palma University in Lima, Peru. Originally from Lima, uh, for seven years he lived and worked in the Tijuana San Diego border region where he established Hermen an architectural and design studio to investigate the self-organized informal city that composes up to 40% of the urban and growing infrastructure of many Latin American cities. Currently, Giacomo works between Mexico City and San Francisco in architecture for exhibitions and museographies that explore new ways of displaying and art archives and material culture. Applying original construction systems and modular devices that hack the body of the visitor and invite them to experience a more focused yet fluid bodily relation to the space and to the display material, breaking the formal status of how visitors behave in an exhibition 
without any signage or labels by choreographing the body of the visitor in a more casual and inclusive manner. Giacomo's work seeks to overcome the white cube and the bureaucracy of drywall. It proposes to treat the museum as a truly public space through the use of creative exhibition systems that explore the interstitial space between document, body, furniture, and architecture. I'm extremely excited to introduce Giacomo Castagnola, and I'll leave you with him. Okay, I will start sharing. Okay, well, well, thank you very much first for the invitation, Alan and Woodbury in general. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Okay. So as Alan say, said, um, I have a studio that named Hermes Studio. Uh, have almost, uh, let's say, almost 15 years. Oh, sorry. So this is kind of a, a bubble of different kind of project, different kind of scales that I have been producing the last 15, maybe 20 years. And, and yes, all of them are organized in this kind of cloud situation and in, in the website is in a time base. No? And this exhibition is divided in three parts, basically. You know, be, because it's directly to architecture students or design students, I was thinking just to present the first part is about what I found and what I nurtured me the first 10 years of my practice as this idea of, of urban sedimentation that I kind of uh, find it just doing um, empirical research in, in the town of Lima and mm -hmm. Tijuana. So just, I want to put the things so you realize you guys are here in San Diego, no? Mexico City where I live too. And this is Peru where I come from. No? Peru is basically a half of the, the country's jungle. The other half is a very hardcore a chain of mountain. And then Lima is actually a very tiny line of desert in which, you know, the, in basically 30% of all the capital population and basic resources are, are like centralized there, right? That's Lima metropolitan, that's a province Lima, and this is a metropolitan area. No? In this area is where all these people migrate. And I present this just because before in the last presentation, I jumped straight to, to, the, to the periphery of Lima, but I, I want to present at least why this growth happened. And you know, when I get out of the school, I was almost in this, uh, in around this moment, no? It's Eight million, seven million people in the city with an immense growth without stop, actually. People migrate in the to the to this capital town, basically with with this uh, statistic, uh, like almost two million per year grew. grew no? So this is the coast of Lima. This is the you know the normal touristic area in which middle class live. This is this this information just to realize how concentrated is Lima in the in the in the capital, no? Thirty percent of the population, seventy percent of, of the gross domestic product, ninety percent of investment. So it's a super centralized. So that's why thirty percent of the population migrate in the fifty in the six, between six, sixty and seventy was the biggest migration. And these are the city was that, that was built out of that strong uh, migration, basically, no? Without the city be able to to provide infrastructure, housing, or transportation, or 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 uh, work, right? So this is a process of self construction and self uh, organization in its own logic, no? The 40s and just to put this, just to realize how the grow, the grow, grow from the water all the way to the 
to the valleys and the river. And I, I actually never lived in this situation. I, my family was already from Lima, uh, you know, middle class. I was, well, I was in the school like you guys, and I'm getting out of the school without really realizing that half, more than half of my city, I don't really have tools to analyze it, you know, to realize what is going on there. So I start making this there is with, with an architect friend, Julio Cesar Bazan, that now lives in, in Madrid just to get information and try to develop tools to, uh, to understand the context, no? And not just say, this is not city, this is not architecture, no? And you can see these are patterns like, I was, I was already migrating to, to San Diego. I worked with Teddy Cruz and I was, you know, very involved in all the projects that take, taking consideration the border and all the idiosyncrasic of, the, of both part of the borders. So that was very interesting going back and forth between Lima and Tijuana and, and understand both contexts, find similar patterns in both, no? More patterns of growth. You can see here the, you know, in the 40s, in the 70s, we have 50% were immigrants almost 90% in the, between 60 and 70. That was a main migration. You know? And then we start going down. No? But this is the early, early, early uh, uh, inhabitants of the city, you know? very far. It's basically a desert. You know? And I, doing research, you can see books. This is a book, uh, El Otro Centero from the Soto, you know? just showing how the city really grew, grow and start taking over the, the agricultural areas with this kind of igloo, they say. No? Igloo is this construction of, made out of uh, bamboo, bamboo fiber, no? and it's basically a, a net of bamboo fiber. And they, they do this, that's how the city grow, no? with this kind of informal uh, takeover of the land with different kind of procedures. No? Uh, Clearly, the, the, the city didn't, was not able to, to, to answer of that amount of migration. So the city, most of the city, half of the city grew this way. No? And I like this picture just to realize how the body is involved in this beginning of the half. No? Totally different to, to the approach of, let's say, a capitalist approach in which you, you normally buy the land, you know, make your plants, do a design, hire a, a builder, the builder make permits, build the house, then you inhabit the house, right? This is total inverse. You inhabit the land with the minimum you have, and then your body there makes you maybe 20 years later uh, uh, is your property, right? But you need to be there. You, you build your house from your body up, right? Even through this very performatic and very dramatic way to you, you start to make a network, not, not just a construction, but a construction of relations in order to survive in that kind of context. No? And I like the, this idea of like from the body start the house in this in this in this image you can you can see. No? Then later I I keep going to the to visit the, the different areas, no? And you can see different approach to prefabrication, for example, no? Simple, very a more more pristine facade and more cheap rear facades. No, I just start to to look different patterns of consolidation. No, I realized like they have very particular ways. For example, I finished totally my first floor. I even painted, but I don't finish the second floor. The second floor, you know, that will, that will be for later. I prefer to have my money even in land or in soil than in the bank. I have this access to the second floor so I can rent it or even my, my son can live upstairs. So this kind of try to, to realize these patterns of growth basically, no? And maybe, and what age this house have? It's not like it's, it's uh, in destruction. It's just never finished to be built, you know? We'll, we'll keep growing. Changing is always part of the process, no? 
Again, the same patterns like I rent second floor, I, no, no, I can in the, make independent, independent or rented that part. So I, I start realizing certain patterns that are not des design wise are more like, well, engage with design, no, but it's not static, it's just a perform how to perform the house, no? For example, this is, this is a 15 years old settlement that this is a 60 years old. No? I think this picture have maybe 10 years, so it will be 70, 25. And now, and I mean, how this this kind of very spontaneous way to solve problems, you know, invade the let's say formal architecture, no? Within the formal city. So I start to think about self-organization, self-construction, but not just in architecture, but in as a culture, no? In the, in commerce as well, as well as in in transportation, and I start to. After reading a particular like uh, theory or or a, a specific essays, I yeah I start to see in this as a kind of urban sedimentation in which you accumulate that you co coagulate your 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 design and then you consolidate according to your your possibility. No, but not just in architecture that's happening as well as in commerce as well in transportation. No, and. And then you know you see the city, but if you realize when you go to Tijuana to, uh, or to Lima or even in Mexico City, the city is always very active. It's not just the static architecture. Architecture have a different time. No, that's why sedimentation start to make sense when I read this text about the landa and how geology through sedimentation process uh, uh, the rivers are doing that kind of movement constant moving, movement of, of rocks and they consolidate these different layers of sedimentation. And so that, that idea started, start, you know, make me, make, helping me understand this context, no? But in commerce, I, I start to think, okay, let's say if they have different layers of consolidation, the different phases of consolidation, I will try to, to, to find these layers, no? These phases. But in the, within the process, I realized I want to take pictures of each unit, each person, each, each person in, the, in their own context and little market or store, let's say, no? Later, I realized how to put it together, but in the process, I, I, I knew I need to record each, each unit, no? Maybe because I was in San Diego and in San Diego, everything is very kind of similar, no? Because you are following a particular rule in here, Everybody's doing their own color, their own form, their own shape, their own size. So I, I was interested in, in half this kind of catalog, as Alan said. No? But in commerce was very interesting. I, you know, I realized, let's say, within thinking in just phases of consolidation. No? Let's say the, how, the, the store start with the best of these guys changing dollars for, 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 for solace. No? He just need the best to start the, the store. So let's say this is a one individual as a commercial vehicle. Just his body is the, the, the platform of, the, of selling, right? You are not using wheels, your, your, your body is hanging the material. This is in Peru, this is in Tijuana in the border. In the border, when you are crossing with the cars, these guys are walking, selling stuff, no? This is a very typical like um, pattern of selling, no? And the first phase, no? You need to be able to walk. This is the second phase. One individual without with a mobile furniture as a commercial vehicle. Like the, let's say they grew a little bit, no? So for example, this is Tijuana. This is an oven, like a stove with with the locks for a for a for a sweet potato, no? So I, all kind of diverse vehicles, no? But it's one individual, his body their body with a mobile furniture as a commercial vehicle, no? Then this is Lima as well, different kinds. The beautiful uh, uh, sharpener uh, knife machine that you can turn into a wheelbarrow. So this is a second, uh, this, this, the other phase, no one individual with a mobile furniture as a commercial vehicle. Then. The next phase, one individual within the mobile furniture as a commercial stand. That's, that that means this, this kind of furniture is starting to turn into a space, no, or into architecture a little bit, because you are going into, 
in Mexico, there are two options. Like you assemble your whole store in the morning and do the assembly of the nine and, and put it back in a, in a garage, normally a garage is place. Or the other unit, like it's actually on wheels and you move the whole unit in some property because you don't leave it outside. No? And then the, the next, the last phase for me, no? just to understand like how this can be growing, one individual inside an immobile furniture as established trade. No? That basically got consolidated in that particular corner because they were allowed to do it. They're, they have the market to do it. For example, this is a shoemaker, a shoe repair. That they, the difference between this, this phase and the other one is like all the goods live and, and over, stay overnight on the street. That for me is like they consolidate. No? And many is markets and architecture and a lot of us, uh, commercial areas in Lima have been developing in this way, right? So that's one way to just think about this idea of consolidation through time, not through design, but through time and through, uh, uh, you know, I, I see it as accumulation, consolidation, then you, you consolidate your, your site, no? this kind of process. The man, I don't want to romanticize this, this informal architecture or commerce. I just want to, un, I, I, at that point, I try to understand my, my context no? and try to make sense of that built landscape. Like not many people really try to give you the sense of what's going on there. And I, I like this, this, I took it from a, a informal, from a, economy, informal economy book. And this Kate Hart mentioned like, they, they distinguish formal economy, which typically involves salary employment from the informal economy, which frequently involves self-employment, but explanation have been elaborated and other attributes to this economy outline it. And I like this, like just to, to, to realize another kind of network like happening in, this, in these processes, no? All the economy are they have an easy access to that uh, support of local resources. The, normally, it's a fam, family-owned business, small-scale operation, labor-intensive use, adaptive technology of innovation, hacking into technology, skill ac acquired outside formal education systems, and unregulated market. No? And for example, in in, in Lima. 73% of the, of the labor market is informal. No? And in Mexico, I think it's close to 60. No? So just to realize like the amount of really power, economic power that that, that kind of uh, population has. No? The same in transportation. When, you, when they took one part of the land, this is the guy who first arrived, no? because it's very easy to get into the sand or in different, different uh, areas of development. The early development in Lima was in the flat areas. Most of the informal or the, you know, the informal constructions take, you know, sides of the rivers, high, high mountains, so infrastructure is very hard to, to get into them. But this, this is the first, the first road that go there, no? And then basically it's a pirate road that then got consolidated through time, no? And then I, I, I start to pictures of all, all the units and realize that as well as the other one, this is a network of, of transportation system for, for that particular scale, right? That then turn, uh, one scale up is the combi. Uh, I took just a couple of pictures, but really when you are in Lima, you, it's very intense, the combi like character in the transportation scenario. No? This is a strike of combis, no? just to, it, yeah, in these images, I'm kind of even, I'm kind of well, like playing with representation. No, I, I'm trying. I was trying to put the, the images at, at, at least in some part, similar way to how I feel it in the context. It's not just they are not like that just for, for the sake of. This is a cashier. They have their own system of self management. Time, no. The, the next day, the coaster, the melee is the bus. 
we don't have like you guys a metropolitan transportation system. We have this very diverse, different different scale of transportation, but not not a main. We we are starting digging to do a, a underground metro system, but it's going very slow. So when you know, I was I was playing, I was exploring representation in these processes, no. And I put this image because I was in that particular moment of playing with representation, how this urban intensity of the city can be Tijuana, can be San Diego, Diego can be Mexico City or Lima, are you know crashing with these other more formal structures. No? And well, DNA and systems, I were I was in that process. I'm I'm showing, I'm showing what. What was I, would, I was doing when I was experienced that particular moment, no? And I was in this idea of systems, no? Systemic approach, for example, change the part for the whole, change the structure to a process, change from having an objective to an epistemic science approach. That means understanding the process of how knowledge is being produced, changing from building it to network as a metaphor of knowledge, change the true form for approximate description. We are now transitioning from object-oriented culture to a system-oriented culture, where the change emanate from, not from the thing, but from the thing, from how the things are, do, are, are done. No? Not just how made the thing, but how the things, who made it, how they made it, why they made it. No? I was in this kind of process. That's why all this network and, and understanding of that process, and, and seems like it's have nothing to do, but. I was, I have been always very interested in DNA. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a genetics, but just a kind of as a philosophy, no? We have DNA in any, in all the nucleus, even in one hair, all the nu all this nucleus of, all the cells in their nucleus have DNA that can reproduce you in, in like totally, no? So I put this more for architects, no? Like, architects always think of structures, of behavior of buildings, of materials, of how materials behave physically or chemically, what are the constructive characteristics, what make them have that constitution, that texture, stiffness, elasticity, or hardness. How to think about material more in this informational age, no? With genetic analogy and, and all these technology that are developing. No? Living organisms possess, possess genes, sequence of atoms and molecules like DNA that contain information encoded in their structural organization. DNA provides the genetic information, the essential structure from, for construction, maintenance, reproduction, and arrangement of the organism. So we, I'm just, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking of self-organization and self-construction of what we just saw. No? DNA, contain all, DNA is contained in all the nuclei of each of the cells of our body in each one, no? The DNA instructions are extremely detailed and specific. What to do, where, when to do it, when to stop producing it, how, how much to produce, and what else to be doing at the same time. All these fine details for the instructions are encoded in what is known as the DNA frequency, frequency regulator, no? It's basically our, our body life encoded in this, in this shape really no so I, that was interesting in this this is a is matter or is memory no is matter or is this information or is both at the same time no it's not just form and function it's just this material is is built is informed it's formed and informed no and this is just this is an exercise because I, I i think important part of what we do as designers and architects and producers are how to represent no how to represent an idea what medium to use do i draw it do i make a video no and this is these are images of different kind of patterns no um and just as an exercise to read it no this is a, a micro section of wood and an african villa from above how the city is being recorded well years ago we don't use cities anymore how dna is represented or this way, the city in Lima from above, my name in, in barcodes, or, or different uh, more uh, 
micro genes scales, no? How the hair get into your skin. And all these are more ge geographical landscape, no? I was trying to understand and, you know, representation in a way too, no? And DNA as a matter and memory at the same time, no? And then I, I read this, this text of um, uh, Manuel Landa about sedimentation, no? And about sedimentation, how sedimentation, no, they mentioned rivers transport rocky material from the point of origin. Such a mountain undergo erosion and weathering to ocean, where they them accumulate. During this process, pebbles reaching the ocean sooner than the large ones. Once the raw material has been sorted to make, um, well, let's say, basically, they, they said that the rivers act as an abstract machine of stratification, as a veritable hydraulic computers. So the, just the water is moving these pebbles, you know, all the way to the to the ocean. But in the process, they are cementing different constitution of pebble groups into a sedimented rock. No, they change scale. They have this double articulation. They are not anymore a, a bunch of pebbles. They, in some particular moment, they they sedimented through different crystallization processes. No, so when you cut up a mountain, you see the layers of time being consolidated in particular layers of pockets of you know, material and time. And, and that change of scale give me the give me the relation to the to the city and to the informal and to how they, you know, through each in the individual constitution, they built up to this sed sedimented uh, urbanism. No? And I put this because, you know, this this analogy can be of a, a stratification. They can apply even to neo the neo Darwinist, for example. Species are formed through grow, gradual accumulation of genetic material. No? So even even the species, genetic, ge uh, or ge geology, geography. No? So uh, this this. Uh, this bunch of concepts and, and theories, and in particular, this particular essay, help me, help me just make sense of all this independent uh, accumulation of, of persons, houses, or transportation, no? in this idea of kind of urban, urban sedimentation, no? in which accumulation, coagulation, and consolidation happen. And then in Spanish work better because mobile is, is furniture. No? So, the mobile turns in mobile, no? And in mobile is uh, real estate. So in this case, furniture turns into real estate in this process, no? That take really is more based on time that, that to like decision to from point A to point B, no? Because the, there is no there is no clarity in that in that line. <clears throat> so this process of thinking in the urban development in a long time, not in terms of process, but in terms of the age of the house or the town, made me really, made me understand that particular, that particular, my particular context, no? And I found different, all these different patterns. And, and I really took in this idea of micro, micro urbanism or no, or this scale in which it's not anymore a chair, let's say, but it's not a building yet. So it is kind of taco stand scale that is very kind of in a purgatory scale situation because it's not, or it's still in the street, but it's not consolidated and it's in this kind of very vibrating scale. And I'm, I'm showing this project that, that are a little old because they, I did it in Tijuana, San Diego. So I, I, I find it like maybe interesting to present it here. And, you know, I never, I have a normal house with, with an architect and plants and a builder, and then I have a room there, no? I didn't pass for this, through this process of self-construction and and the things that I was try to understand, no? But when I was in Tijuana, I, I was kind of the immigrant. I was the one without networks, you know, early beginning to my migration, no? In San Diego, Tijuana. 
So somebody asked me to present a project and I, I built my little house, like the interior of the house I would live in Tijuana for a couple of years. <clears throat> and and it's kind of it's a kind of a, a beautiful diagram that I really like. This is Tijuana, San Diego, the border. And you know, they they, should, they, they asked me to present a project, and I present this tiny project that I I really in here was really the, the the exercise of okay, how I represent this 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 little house that I, I actually built. So I realized in the process of thinking how to present the leader, this leader intervention, that I was living at that particular time in the, in the way I was kind of trying to understand in Lima, no? because I was the immigrant. I was living in that particular uh, room and I was building at the same time that I was living there. So that's another process that normally happen. No? You don't build and then you move when it's totally finished. You are building and you are living at the same time, the same place. No? And then the other thing I was trying to think and to put is how I, that I am an immigrant, how I have a fridge, I have a TV, how, how I came with a couple of luggage. No? So I thinking about what we saw about DNA and no memory, I was trying, I put all the objects like are part of my house each one, all, all of each one, the kitchen, the bathroom, and the living room. And I try to put to each one information, like what, 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 who, who give me that material, no? And I, I realized like I was, in a, in a way, I was trying to make the, the plans of how I build my house, no, my physical house, and how as a migrant I build in a way my family, no? So I put, each of the persons who give me something. Now, for example, I live in the first floor of Marco Ramirez R. that is a fantastic uh, artist from Tijuana, that he was a builder for, for I think 20, 30 years in US. So he's a super well builder, have all the materials. With these materials, I was not able to build anything. No? So I draw all of the pieces like he gave me. No? He just, uh, I loaned it from him. No? And then I have all these, pieces like TV from Teddy, this radio from Miguel, no? And all these persons in a way form, form part of my network, my family from many years, no? So I really like this, this uh, little diagram. Then when I got married with Lucia, we took another room and built a closet, obviously. No? And then I was thinking in this kind of uh, shapes of, you know, consolidate things, no? Or even writing about the DNA, what to build, where to build, how to build, what to build at the same time, no? I was thinking the same. Or the degree of irregularity of, a, of an object is not other thing that the efficacy of occupy space, no? That's kind of the description of a fractal, is the efficacy of occupy space. And then here I just explore it with this platform of support and platform of contain, actually, no? And that's how I, yeah, that's what was the little house. That, when I arrived, I was like this, and I just took it all over and put this like floating platform of the kitchen. And then uh, I have this closet that, you know, recycling, just painting, very simple gestures that I kind of learned in the research before. I destroy the whole, and I, cons I kind of realized that this base work. So I just consolidate that base. And I was just, you know, I was kind of following this idea of consolidation and kind of accumulation process, no? And I, yeah, that, that was the idea, the, the little house. Then I I'm keep showing projects here. This is another in interesting, it didn't work really, but it's interesting to show it. And this idea of thinking about micro urbanism, okay, how this, this scale of, in this, in this particular uh, subject was, okay, Tijuana doesn't have benches, doesn't have public space, we don't have, we, we need green space, we, you know, we have a lot of style from US being dumped here, so we can use and think about this network and kind of, a, disperse units like can be cells like you can distribute whatever and do this like micro part networks no and this is like one is a cell like you can configure it in different ways no it doesn't have a shape 
until you arrive to the context. No? And this idea of painting, you know, very romantic. But but I like this 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 uh, this this image just because this is a scale like I years later I start keeping it. No, this is scale that is just a one unit. The one unit like reproduce can build a system. No, or or reduced to a unit still can play as an independent uh, entity. No, but can be reproduced as a and grow. No, and consolidate according to the. But that particular uh, com, com, like scale that is not already into the furniture and is not yet into the house or into architecture no? and we did these posters and then one 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 town did, did it for themselves but actually it was complicated because this, the the park was super big and i didn't i i i was not able to really realize the two sides of the political parties that were playing there I was too naive at that moment. I was not able to really do that. And, and after that, I did, I did just a much more simple, less problem, anthropological problem approaching, which you go somewhere to do something, right? So I was in, in my, I did something just from my house and put it in the back, no? That I did this, this uh, little project of a bench because I was living, right in the border when you in this building so below i hear i was hearing the the bell of the door when people go to come to mexico no? so i just did this bench because because it's very market driven this area nobody allowed you to see it so i just contact the, you know and the bench eat from all these like sources of uh popular like shapes like the diablito wheelbarrow and El carretilla in Espanol, no? In, in Peruvian, let's say. So I play, I, I contact this guy who has a little vending machine and I, uh, he, he allow people to sit and he take care of the bench. No? I leave it in the morning and take it at night. When I was in Denmark, I did another venture with a big wheel and you can later like stand up the thing. This is the, yeah. That, that, those were pictures of it. And then in San Diego, I did it another version for a fair, for a furniture event, I think. And I put it in the in the back, the California laws of loitering, because they were very strange how they loitering wander from one place to another with an upper upper and business, such a person post treat to public safety. So I took it from the code of California, how they describe loitering. That is a very, very diffuse uh, word, right? Loiter, idle, wonder, stroll, or play. And then this, I took this bench to different places and Korea and did Denmark. And in here was kind of a small bicycle, bicycle system, like a little micro transportation system. No? Like you can plug different things, and we we build these long, long bikes. And this is in San Diego as well, 15 years ago. Imagine Teddy, Teddy, and Casa uh, Casa Familiar and Golden Shin Garage did this very interesting event. I think this is the first time they invite me to do a project like as a as a person because before you work in offices, right? And, and the property line, the property line is something very strong in, in, in the border, no? You are very clear where, where, where is the line you can cross easily. So this idea of the line and this poster that somebody from, I think from, from Berlin did it, I used this, uh, this idea of the property line and kind of introduce into the space. The space was just a, uh, uh, a warehouse in, in Chula, no, in, San Isidro that Casa Familiar just bought it with this, this is a layer of the plant, the, the floor plant with the columns. And I, the idea was just, I will paint, paint property lines in the columns and make this kind of different cumulus of property, mixed properties. The, the idea was no, no hierarchy in this scenario. We have three speakers, the chairs will be in the beginning. You take your chair and sit wherever you want. 
So it was this mix between a party and a lecture, no? Very cheap, very cheap process. We just use paint. This was kind of the Photoshop that was kind of the ended with plastic little cubes. Um, I'm, I'm painting, no? A very simple strategy that, 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 that the, the, they use but because it's a very, very simple and cheap and you can, uh, you can invade space with just paint. Huh? And you take your chair and you, you know, the event develop in a very diverse way, let's say. That's another about the border, no? Um, I was living in that house and a Danish artist knocked the door and invited me to do a project in Denmark. In, he, she have a, a house, she, she's an artist and do a, a project in which invite artists to intervene her, her background, her uh, uh, back size of the house, like no? the garden, with things about uh, public space. No? So I was working with a, with a student that was deported from, from, from San Diego at that time. The, this, this is the house of, the, of, of Anja in Denmark, Copenhagen. And she told me like, when she went to, she always go to an Iceland for, 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 for holiday. When she come back, uh, the neighbor cut all the trees between both because she, he wanted a six meter wall. No? Because she made that exhibition the year before, somebody did something in the roof and he got very mad. So I just, you know, I live in this place, in this area with, with this wall is kind of a, just part of the landscape, no? And this, uh, I'm in Denmark with this very simple problem of two neighbors, no? So I just play with this idea of the wall and then Fernando that got the port and then he find a way back in, in you know, in the way he, he couldn't, he could, let's say. So I just play with the idea of this, duplicate the wall and kind of build this, tunnel in a way, no? Thinking about the tunnel, how, you know, making a wall and making a tunnel at the same time. I was thinking in all these version of tunnels that when, when these things are, when the, when times are harder than you can deal with, the tunnel is the, the, the alternative. No? So I was thinking in Fernando at that time too, no? And this is the project I propose, like just extend that tunnel and take over all the little settlement that, that, that she has in the back. No? I did these diagrams collaborating with the assistant in Denmark that she took notes of the different tiny things. I decided to build, start building a month before. So I just dig a column, a couple columns per day, or three, four, and then decide what happened you know, I would not cut a tree to do the wall, no? so I leave the tree pass or certain things happen. No? And that was this very, very spontaneous development of this ending. The real, the thing was that in the, the, the year ago, the year before they didn't allow to, to walk through here. So I just leave the possibility to cross all these open areas. No? At the same time, I was doing these thing, these little, these different devices. Then you can you can track here this the scale, no, the the hybrid between a little motorcycle and a cyclop monitor. This was to present a website, imagine in 2007. Now it's like you can do that in, a, in your phone. No? And perhaps this is one of the first time I got into a museum in San Diego Museum of Art. Look, no, MCASD. They did an exhibition about human nature, no? It's artists respond to changing planet. They invite a lot of artists to do, to went to different places in the world and make work. And they invite me to do the kind of the informational space, no? And the, wor and the workshop space. And here was very simple, like how I can basically replace foam that is super toxic and never disappear in the face of the earth. So that was a project, how, how I can replace foam. No? There are different samples, kind of bio, but they still use oil. And then but the idea was to how I replicate foam either way, 
had the structure, no? How I kind of built a, an interior landscape of this kind of coral stone like spice uh, landscape, no? And then I found this American guy in Tijuana who have this company called Pacific Pool to use 80% paper, 20% recycled cardboard and uh, newspaper and do this pulp pulp uh, molds, no? Molding. And he just give me everything like for free. No? So we build this, this kind of uh, uh, blocks of, of foam, no? biodegradable foam that people sit there and in the end of the exhibition, you put it in the paper trash. Maybe some of them keep it, but they, they start to getting degraded. No? So I think that's kind of the, the beginning of what many projects later we we still doing in a different scale, no? But kind of make space for artists to, to show more the, than the pieces, their archival material, no? And in a way, find the, what is the kind of the piece or the DNA of the, of the, of the sub, subject matter in order to just do a, 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 the correct gesture in order to connect with the with the subject no? and build something interesting. No? And this was the the workshop ver version, no? Like that the first one to do the info launch and this was the the lab space. And here again, okay, sustainability, let's explore sustainability, no? Sustainability is important, not just material sustainability, but social sustainability, no? So I work with my work, my metal worker and my carpenter. And I prefer to spend my money with them, like support that local system than buy, well, even though I bought, I bought this bamboo sheet that I call it bamboo, I am sure they still exist, that they came all the way from China, no? But they, they are sustainable material in a way, but you know, all these all this questions, just to, to explore the possibilities. Aurauco from, from Chile, they have, they, they, they make their own, their own, forests and they were very sustainable. We're, we do this like a uh, shelving system from this uh, Chula Vista recycle being material and some Home Depot wheels and structure. And then the tables have the interesting is like they encode something within their particular shape. No, They are not just flat tables. They are, they have this, this part encode shape that you can configure it in all these possibilities no and i have the you know the idea of the table have you can program the table in a way depend on how you configure it no? and then you shellac or wax no to explore these things but sustainability important to realize like social sustainability as well no not just uh, not just uh, natural sustainability no? then this is one of one building i built I built a couple of buildings in, San D in Tijuana, but this is one of uh, marble in a way, in the freeway to Rosarito. And this is the first model made out of like, uh, how you say, like, like a plastic thrust, thrust, thrust. And that was the idea, this is structure and this rock, no? And the counter, the rock is the bathroom and the cashier, you know, the structure, and then you have this patio for slabs of marbles. And this was a very, very like <clears throat> clear structure with flat connection in each section because it's too complicated cut in this, like they say, uh, fish mouth way. This is the, the, the layout, no? Bathroom, cashier in a kind of little pool of water, the counter, then the patio from for marble, and then everything was a showroom, really. Even the stairs was showroom, no. And this typology of freeway structures, because the the engineer told me like they always pass the lot. They never realize, and they already pass the lot. So I just built something like saying just, hey, we're here, no. So you can see it a, a couple hundred meters before you arrive. No? And this is another model, I think it's 150. It's very detailed and kind of one meter 20 by one meter 20. Couple studies of Photoshop 
not really 3D, another kind of Photoshop studies of how the view can see the structure being built, a lot, you know, following the same size of the other one, allow this entry here. We find this very fine light blue to paint it. But then, you know, another a, a couple of weeks later I came yeah, the stair, you know, half of half of half of the stair is like much more like stone-like, and the other is more like a floating metal one. Thinking about system, not how the lighting system participate of the structure and the illumin the the air condition system. These were made for for uh, fixtures for the sink, no? The the cube. Well, then they 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 start painting another color and they paint it orange, and then everything start to get like backwards. They bought a balloon, and then they I before I never showed this last part, but you know, I already overcome this. And I think it's part of the beginning of the, the presentation. No? It's like how to the thing's still growing, no? There is there is sometimes they don't they don't stop, right? At that time, at them I went to Boston to have that master. Let's see how we're going at that. Okay. And uh well different experiments right different experiments kind of playing with the same scale this is scale of it's not all this is not already uh, uh architecture scale but it's not anymore a furniture scale no? this was a collaboration with this uh lithuanian artist from mit who they make a research about the river oxford river in in oxford the thames river sorry in oxford and uh, they invite me to build this Whatever we, we can build a platform to do this uh, wet lecture that they will develop. So I, you know, using recycled materials, the museum have a lot of neoprene, neoprene. So I just think how to build something with neoprene. So I will build this kind of lily pad jellyfish in which you jump inside, but you didn't get wet. The, she, Tracy is a curator, imagine. So all the all the experience of water was need to be involved. And then I'm showing this because it's, it's pretty much time in, in a chronological way, but then I collaborate with this guy, James Rojas, when I think what I was in break in school. He, he made this collaborative modeling with, with communities. So I, they, I tasked to collaborate. I invite him to Tijuana to do a model and that was very interesting. And then I try to think what I can put in, in that very clear project that we have. No? And I, the, the, the exhibition was in, in, uh, in Long Beach. So we just built the Long Beach uh, territory, including the water, the street, and the, the hill, no? Signal Hill. Long Beach have an, a big oil bubble below that, that hill. That was an archival material from how Long Beach was before. No? And then this is a 3D kind of, you know, playing. I This is the first time I kind of include, okay, but let's use the city from above and from below, no? So we have these different views be below the water, below the bubble, the bubble of oil. And this was a very simple exhibition space, no? This modeling always worked very, very powerful with the people. So, you know, I, I was playing with this, this different scale of furniture that are not furniture for, for domestic use, no? Are furniture for these different like, subject matter presentations. So one of the first project that I would say, you know, one of the most important I did, I did it in Mexico City. This is a picture of Insight. I don't know if you know, Insight is a very important art uh, art event that happened in the border region in between Mexico, Tijuana and San Diego. About, about public, basically public art interventions, not during 20 years. This was the last one that I was able to see in 2005. And this is a, you know, the, the Canyon Man being 
throw it to the border. No? So the, these guys close their their faces, they're facing in the border and they make an immense archive documenting 20 years of projects with hundreds of, of artists. And they give one of their archives to UCSD. You can see it in their library. And the other give it to the Secut in Tijuana, but then they have problems and they give it to Mexico City, to a big museum of UNAM, the big university, to the MUAC, that is a contemporary art museum. And they commissioned me to do, to do, to, to build up, a, a, to, to design a modular system that can ex exhibit their archive. But Arkea, that is the, the entity that deal with the archive within the museum, will will be able to use it for different archive later on. No? So that was the idea. No? This is the museum. I will. I think I will go faster now. And I kind of play with this little, this, you know, dynamic of the space. It's super big space, concrete. No, so I built this system in like based on four cubes that can be mobile and can be used as an archive or library or even like little cubicle for video. No, you configure them in a particular way and then you unfold the tables. No. A, a, network of tables, this is a possibility of position. And then on top of the table, you put this kind of family of, of different devices of, of, that contain different kind of archive, no? of, of different, different ways to open it. No? For me, well, okay, how, what is the difference between this kind of exhibition and a normal painting sculpture exhibition? No? So the only thing I was thinking is to build kind of a landscape kind of of the city, kind of Tijuana in a way, um, thinking of an unfolding archive that maybe I show you three pictures, but then you need to see the other nine. So half of the exhibition is exhibit and the other one is, the, the other half is archive. So it's, just, it's a storage and it's an exhibition at the same time. It's kind of a library, but an exhibition with this different kind of typology. And then a simple table from IKEA, no? That we kind of hack to make different, to make different uh, scenarios with the same model, no? And this was the final configuration. This was the first time we need to use uh, 3D modeling for all the exhibition because each document need to be docu like exactly located. We built everything in San Diego, in Tijuana, actually. We bought the legs in Ikea in San Diego and we shipped everything for, to here. It's a birch plywood, very simple, the same shape. And the idea of using the table as, as if the table is a, is a wall, no? I was trying to avoid as well these little, little walls that make the feeling of a fair, no? I was trying to, let's, 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 Let's use the platform of the table as, as the whole surface of the exhibition, no? And then I show you three pictures, but you need to see the other six, no? Not everything is exposed. Half of the material is archived, no? Playing with wood, a little more warm. The, the space is super big and cold. You can, you can up and down the legs to make all this, like, shape and ramps, no? With the leftovers of the wood, 20 centimeters, we built this uh, bench, left, leftover bench. No, you can use the cubicles as an archive, depend of the model, you can use as a little cubicle for video. And then this exhibition have been used for the last 10 years, actually. No, this is the other second configuration that they invite us to help them. And then the other one, they did it by themselves. No, They did this other one, that they start changing the model. You know, the, the system doesn't need to be 100% all the time. You can use 70%. If you are keeping using that system, you can mix with another thing. You know, it doesn't need to be like a pure system. No, And you can see different treatments of the, of the models No, in the during 10 years, no? This is another exhibition 
they saw that one and the, the director invited me to do kind of a similar, I start realizing that, okay, instead of do drywall that you can destroy, you need to destroy every exhibition, let's do this kind of structured furniture that you can keep. And if you don't have money to build all the time, this will be your infrastructure, your small infrastructure for exhibition systems. No? So this was an immense church in downtown Mexico City, all twisted and very heavy, not very strong. So I was, and they have a archive sound, archive of music, no? So I was thinking to build these this, uh, domes, no? And I ended building these two sonic domes that, like, that have speakers in the back. So I was just maybe playing with, instead of having a headphone or a, a whole room for a sound, ha then let's have these kind of tunnels and I was playing a little bit with the church, kind of talking with the church and reducing you domesticized a little bit of that ecclesiastic space, no? And then I start to using this uh, metal angle from, from warehouse. Yeah, if, the, if, if Archaea was more like a, like a continuous surface, I got a little tired of that. And then this is more like structures, no? A structure that have little pieces of wood. They, we don't have too much budget in here, in that, this particular one. No? And then, you know, I, I, I need it with vinyl. Okay. So this is another one, interesting approach to archive. Istamayo did this uh, scenography and, and custom design for a ballet in Covent Garden in the 1960, no, 70, 50, 59. And I just play with two things, two things that are part of the scenography structure, no, or construction, the, the, the layers of fabric that make you the, the streets of the stage, and then the bleachers, no? So these two, two elements, I play to use, use these divisions to kind of uh, best, best, best uh, make the circulation, no? I never print before in like translucent fabric, but I like the idea of the, the seal, kind of playing with the seal, the translucent. When people walk through, the dancer kind of uh, get animated, no? And that was a particular treatment for picture archive. Now, and then these kind of bleachers uh, have different program, no? You can see it and hear the music, they play, they work as a, as a vitrines, bookshelf, iPad, no? Archive material. And then later we recycle, we just recycle this one too. No? And then the originals were in the walls. This is another, another ex ex uh, interesting exhibition. They invite me to MOAC as well, the big museum in, in, in uh, the University uh, UNAM. And this is a Lance Wyman, a New York designer, very, very well known here in Mexico City, because he designed the logo of the 68 Olympics in Mexico that is wonderful and designed a lot of important uh, institutional logos in Mexico City, like the Metro logo and all the many of the, the icons of the log, the Metro station. So his hand is very like, very well known in Mexico City, no? his style. And then this was more like they called me kind of last minute, but the approach was very simple. Like, like let's design, let's make a graphic design in the floor, kind of using the typology of the train station like he, he draw. And, and from there, let's do the exhibition, no? just to have another approach more close to what, how he works, right? So we were just playing with this different configuration until we arrived to the particular one. No, each line, each color, take you to a to a different nucleus or different subject matter. No. This is interesting. This guy, when I was in MIT, Diego Flores Magón invited me to help him with his space in downtown Mexico City. Interesting because in both archive as well as a very, uh, very intense street bending in downtown Mexico City. This was the space. This is the street, how 
you know, how it's active in different kind of mobile scenarios. And when I came, I had this structure that we, we built all these little units in order to hack that cube, no? that metal cube that was already existed. And we introduced this kind of big drawers like you can open close and close the whole space and open, no? To address different kind of, uh, it's a little long this one, so I have a video, but maybe, maybe I'll show later. I don't know. And this is the lower space that I did totally inverse, just a closet, a big closet in which you can store everything. At that moment, I start working, okay, what kind of system I can use from the neighborhood to start exploring different uh, structures and I'm start playing with this guy who do wire, wire like, like wire for clothing, no, for street vending, but we start to collaborate and we now develop this shelving system, like it's a hanging shelving system, no? like can be, can be folded and unfolded. No? And then we build this, this mobile Awisote with so sonic devices that, that people normally ask for, for the machine and take it to the street and do, you know, in these cases, uh, posters, or this is the marijuana community taking over to do some kind of presentations and, no? So the unit, the little unit of the museum go out to do, to do some connections, no? Maybe I will show just, maybe I will show just that video. Just to don't miss that, uh, I would like to show, just to see a little movement here, let's see. If it's too long, I will, I will go faster, but let's, let's see this one. Hola, soy Juana Carrillo Martínez, tengo 48 años. Soy hija de la señora de esta Reséndiz. Nosotros vivimos aquí en el predio, aquí enfrente de Colombia 42, vivimos durante un buen rato. Yo creo que, que más que, más o menos llegamos en los 80, pues estaba um, un poco difícil para entrar a vivir eh, en, esos, en esas condiciones pero pues no teníamos otra opción. Era eso o quedarnos en techo. Siempre hubo chismes eh, por los negocios de mis hermanos, pero pues nadie se atrevía a entrar. Se decía en el castillo que se estaba derrumbando o decían que estaba apuntalado.
So, I, yeah, we talk about in the beginning about representation, no? I, I start realizing like just pictures doesn't make, doesn't show the whole experience of the projects. So I start collaborating with Miguel Wenrostro who start, we start working to do videos of the exhibitions as like this one. And uh, yeah, maybe I will show another another one, another exhibition like this one. This is the first maybe that we built. Well, we have a lot of text, but let's check it a little bit. This is about, about the Me Mexico City exhibition about Mexico City. And it's a group of curators from the school. And they this is the last, the last project they do. These are they are like they were like 12 approximately. And we we work with them helping building like the exhibition, right? And this is in a big, beautiful space. And we build basically this, uh, this, uh, this kind of piece of infrastructure in which we, we, we were able to put different kind of, uh, uh, locate different kind of video spaces so people can jump in, get it to below, no? La materialidad de la urbe. Las ciudades están edificadas con materiales. Acero, vidrio, arena, concreto, madera, plástico, por citar algunos ejemplos. Cada utopía ha tenido sus materiales predilectos, pues estos portan consigo una idea de cómo debería ser el mundo. finales del siglo XIX, el acero fue dominante, a partir del siglo XX y hasta la actualidad, el concreto es el material que define la visualidad y las limitaciones espaciales de los proyectos modernos. El concreto ha desbordado la ciudad como signo preferido de la misión de progreso, misma que se impone a los imaginarios locales sin importar condiciones climáticas o tradiciones constructivas. El trabajo constituye una dimensión económica y simbólica del espacio urbano. Los fenómenos de demolición, ocupación y utopía que modifican constantemente este entorno son producto del trabajo de sus habitantes. Cada ciudad posee sus propias dinámicas laborales y modos peculiares de diálogo entre los mercados globales y las economías locales. The strategy of building this structure very close to the wall gives us the possibility to build this little corridor in the back of the gallery and change, changing a little bit the scale of that, no? making a little more intimacy in that corridor. And that allow us to put a lot of video rooms. Instead of video room, we did this little kind of video, uh, video beds, no? and then you can jump on top. <laughs> La forma en que se llevan a cabo tareas remuneradas y no remuneradas ilustra algo sobre cómo negociamos con nuestros deseos y aspiraciones como individuos de una sociedad y cómo estamos atravesados por las condiciones económicas de la ciudad y la mercantilización de la fuerza de trabajo. Los lenguajes producidos por formas dispares de ocupación crean nuevos códigos para pensar la ciudad. These were all kind of, uh bacteria that grow in the Mexico City. Las ciudades son los espacios centrales de la acumulación económica. Cada construcción se levanta sobre los escombros de construcciones anteriores. Cada nuevo desarrollo es la cimentación de otro proyecto futuro. Durante mucho tiempo, se pensó que la construcción de una ciudad ideal era algo posible. Ejemplo de ello es el mismo conjunto urbano en un alto platelón. Hoy, que hemos visto proyectos de la ciudad moderna en ruinas, sabemos que el espacio it was, yeah, that's this project, no? Huh? Yeah, we explore again, no? The, how, how we can in, invite the body to act differently, no? I, 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 will, I always think like, I always say like the museum tells you like, you know, you see that line, you know you, can, you don't need to cross it. You see that piece in the wall, if you don't understand it, that's, that's okay, most of the people don't understand it. So 
if you get something good for you and keep walking, don't stay. No? So everything we do is kind of changing, inversing that, no? How, how I invite you to stay, to kind of touch, to, to change your position of stiffness, to lay down in the floor. If I lay you down in the floor, you will act totally different later on, no? And this strategy of putting everything, like consolidating one unit instead of having different pieces around, is the strategy we used it, uh, we used it before. No? It's kind of similar to this kind of approach. And instead of having this, this was an analysis of a, of a entry of a museum that have everything like dispersed. So with the project we put it all in the center. No? Just in the center and work with that center, no? In that center have everything, like the store, the, the coffee, the, the plant, the public space, everything is consolidated to the center. I don't need to depend on the walls. I, we can build this kind of uh, semi-architecture unit in the center, and just then the, the walls are just um, complemented uh, space for us, no? So that's kind of a strategy we are we we play it we play it before and we play it in this in this other project. You know? That is a science and technology pavilion in a in an immense uh, book fair. So we just this this wooden uh, center kind of island in which you can climb. It's basically a bookshelf, but you have this the office is down there. The tree is planted in the center. You have holes in you can you can play with and go all along. No? So using that volume is not it's not totally whole. It's, it's storage and it's, it's inviting people in the different scenarios. No, that was this. That was kind of the. I think that's the store. The store open and close in this way. Well, let's say, let's see. <clears throat> so in, in, in order to keep it in that same space, we need to close that section. So this is how the, the store open and close. So it's basically that more is the door as well. No? And that part is the bookshelf as well. I don't know how we The workshop area, the bleacher working as a as a literary auditorium. Now, and we need to build everything here in, in, in everything in Mexico City. And let me let me see. I can show you and by mo all modular, and then we we assembly there. No. So everything is one unit that was already built. And we just plug it together on site, no? And this is the basic island. Then we build this structure that came like that, but we knew we would just uh, build it that way with a little office back, a little store for equipment, kind of subtle divisions between one space and the other, workshop area corner, all the pavilions make all the config walls, no? We just built in the center and play with that same strategy, no? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm finishing kind of. I don't know if I will take, I will just maybe show one video of common traits because that maybe we don't have too much time, but, but let's see. And I put just this last, project we did these last last years, a little before pandemic times and, and now. This was in New York, the shed, a, a technology exhibition. 
some of the project is locate locate well the pieces no and and help them make the configuration and the space that they require no? this was another one that we make kind of a, like a exoskeleton for a planter for a palm it's a project that is a uh, using sensors to 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 have information about the, the, the climate in Guadalajara. So this is kind of a device to, to, to show the project. No? So I was playing with solar, solar illumination to the pond. These this wind, wind wheels are always moving. No? I think that play a little bit with a, with a craft and kind of a, a tech. No? We are I will just show these last projects that we are just um, um now we are doing two big museums that are permanent museums. We turned from a temporary exhibition to more permanent uh, exhibition. So this is one of the the new museums between anthropology and contemporary art no? will uh, open here in, during this year. No? Well, the pandemic expanded, expanded the project already. No? And yeah, well, I don't know if I, I will have time to, to talk about common traits, but, but I will show one video that is kind of interesting to understand the project. A common trait is one, one project I kind of start doing it after my, my, my thesis in, at MIT that was about, about the mining, the mining conflict be, between uh, it, that happened in the Andean area in which, which is full of metals and copper and gold, no? But is most, mm. most of them are part of the, most of them are, are part of the, of a real, of, of real towns, no? And a lot of conflict between the water and the, sorry, yes. So I did this, this kind of experiments. Okay. So I did this, I did this kind of experiment. I did this whole, but as a mountain, no? Just thinking about like Peru just sell, sell rocks, no? And we, we don't have too much industry. We, we sell rocks and, and, and agricultural products, no? So I was just thinking, perhaps I were, I were going back instead of the urban area, now I'm going back to the rural area, no? And keep talking about the hills and the mountains, no? These are the conflict like we, we, we see lakes like we were drained, no? Oh, yeah, lagoons. Houses, or the, I did about a particular town, no? Like they move, move the whole town and build a new one, no? So all that conflict, and you know, I did a couple of pieces, but I didn't, you know, I'm not a sculptor. I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel totally. This was my, this was my, this was my last, my last work at MIT for my thesis project. Well, I wrote. We, you need to write a thesis like that. thinking about the sediment, sedimentation instead of consolidating is just degradating and just dissolving no that was kind of and i'm not a sculpture so i did this i really like the the research but i didn't really get to nothing very like cohesive for me so i um i start to do when when they invite me to a residency here in, in mexico city i start i want to do a project like can address that subject in my own way no and I realized like, you know, that's a very heavy, like 
quinoary economy into a very like post industrial like pre-industrial towns, no? So I was more interested in low tech after that. Just thinking in, okay, what's happening instead of just hiring these people, how what what will be if you know you can track what are the knowledge being produced there, what kind of craft they make, what kind of techniques, what are the building codes or build, building DNAs that are happening there, no? And play with that, like, and, and in that process, not only build something or just use, use the technique, but sort of record the process, who built it, how to build it, where the material like, like are coming from, no? What, what it represents, no? So all this like material culture around the production of, a, of something, no? That was kind of the, the project. Going kind of the colonial way, Oh, to, to, to see the very mundane and kind of non, supposedly non, non, uh, este, non high tech technologies. Uh, you know, uh, 3, 3D printing and CNC is not the only technology to produce innovation. That's what, that's what I start realizing. No? So, so I, oh, no, this is another project. Well, this is not the one I was having, but mm, let me let me see if I find it. Okay, sorry, uh, it should be here. Mm. Okay, this one, because these have all the Oficio Comunes, and just to show the like the tone, the tone of the project. No, it's not. I didn't like develop the like a lot of new designs i think was more kind of a research process no oh, let's see let's see if it's possible to see it it's maybe a little a little heavy no. okay okay so this was a residency day by me, so do I have money to do to do an exhibition, a book, no? And the, the idea was this: Oficio Comunes, kind of a common traits, no? Not I didn't I didn't want to, to say uh, artesanía or craft. I just to avoid that. And them officios and traits give me the possibility to do something like it's a service, maybe, and not a product making, for example, no? And then these are different the exploration, no? One with this group of elderly women who meet in the street just to be together, just that. They don't sell anything. They just show you how to knit. And then I'm mapping all these little, very beautiful naming of all the knots. And then it's kind of a poem when you start reading all the little uh, knitting uh, knots. No? This is another one, the wire guy who I still working seven years later, producing these shelving systems. And this is a system that they is a is a the, the main support of street vending in Mexico City, no? And and to normal stores, no? Legal stores too, no? All this metal welding or just bending and covering with plastic pipes, no? A very colorful, so same material of the Acapulco chair, no? So you have a tons of colors. But this was interesting. Is again, they. Everything is a hanging system. In a nail, you build your, your, your store. The thing is, you don't need to, you, if you don't touch the floor, you can hang. Nobody will tell you anything. So this, this is a whole system just for hanging, no? And I start playing with that material just to see how, how hang, how I, can, how I can explore that, no? And these were another craft guys. In this case, the, the machine of, of polishing was the kind of the character that the grandfather built it a hundred years old, no? a hundred years ago. And they, we, we, they draw the machine in the glass no? through some blasting. And then this is, after I work with the guy of the wire, I, we start developing this, this little unit no? that came from a pan holder. This is a pan holder. So I told them, okay, take out the hood, make make it a little longer, give me give me a couple of materials. So I start playing, I put together this, this is a socks or tight holder. No? And then we build this 
beautiful shelving system that if I did, never knew this guy, I would never imagine a hanging system shelving, no? But that, did that technology give me the possibility of thinking in that way, no? And then we use it in different exhibition. They invite the, the structure to be display different kind of material. This is a, a architecture and design a museum that is already closed, but they have a, a big collection and they use the, the EVAs, no? This was in Los Angeles. And this is another version in which I use this chair as the, and this connection as a DNA to build this project in Cusco, no? And for Peru, Cusco is a, like, in, and record all the machines. I think for this one will be good to, to show the video. And again, the video are, are again, tools of representing, no? How we can represent in, in, the, in a different way and record the process, the material, the technique, the tools that they are using, no? And in here they invite me to do some kind of library structure for exhibiting uh, material. So what kind of... Buenos días. Ah, ya, ¿cómo estás? Esos son, esos se han mundiado, ¿no? material they need to ask permission to the community to go uphill and cut it so the material not, not all the material came from the store no? so that's what's interesting to, to realize there are three kinds of woods here con las cuerdas yo terminaré y vamos a dejarlo y te iré para el ingeniero que es a ver si yo lo va a hacer esa habla de este aquel tiempo también casi casi de 100 años atrás esto ya ahí está pero mucho cuidado Quechua words for the tools. Quechua is an, an indigenous language original from Peru. That's a beautiful chair that we took as an example. In the beginning, they used this crazy these crazy tools, no? but this is a beautiful agricultural tool turning to a works making tool.
the beginning he was using this tool, but later they use an electric drill. No? Then we did that little exhibition with the tools and the process of the making. And I was just using the same technique of the chair, expanding to this table, shelving, bench, um, office space. No? In the web, you can check. Oh, there is there is different kinds. I don't know if I how how we are con with time, but um, but this is another one that is maybe more familiar with you because one of well we can end very close very soon, but. One thing I was thinking is like how I can use, I can choose one technique or one, one object, one material, no? That represent the city in a way, no? The, the city making. So the wire in Mexico City, you are, you know where this came from. And I, I asked, I am, um, I, I have an exhibition in Los Angeles and it, I did the same, but with uh, who make the taco trucks, who build it, how they build it, no? And this is the one uh, we did it. And we will, maybe it's too long, but I just will show some, some shots, fast shots of the video. Because this is this well, well, this is, will be placed in uh, East LA. <laughs> The process of the welding, the, the guy who, who put the vinyls, I don't know the names, but it seems like maybe some vinyls. kind of that kind of in a way the end of the thesis how I ended no and then there are another ones with with this chair typical chair from Zacatecas the, in which we went to see where they took that material where they took that knitting chair brought the material no so they go to a clo a lake close by and cut it out no knead it so yeah I think we can kind of end here. Well, the web is, the web is Hermen Studio, uh, 
or my name, the my name dot com. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of for now. That will be maybe all. All right. Um, I think we've got time for uh, one or two questions, if that's all right with you. Sure, sure. Please go ahead. I'm happy to participate. Um, we have one in the audience We um, asking, how long does it take you to plan these ideas before bringing them to life? Uh, uh, what ideas? Like a particular, like, oh. <laughs> well, the first part, the first part really are 10 years. Like with the first research of the Lima, really give me, give, give me boost for like 10 years of, pro, of imagine projects of micro urbanism, furniture that are unit and system, no? So that first kind of input of research and exploring and Teddy and Tijuana, Lima, no? Give me all that. Then I got a little tired of even my own subject. I, I was kind of empty at, that's where, where I went to the master. And I really got like, went other way, other way, other way. No? And then Oficios Comunes that I feel is the, my other next 10 year project came from the thesis. No? Even though it was an art thesis and I did this sculpture, I, I didn't feel I'm a sculpture. So I tried to see, okay, what will I do? What I would like to do for the next years, you know, in parallel to the other projects, no? That I can, I would like so, and this kind of idea of of, of research in, into a very common making that normally we don't even realize. Um, for example, in here that they develop their own little tool in order to make from the tiny chair to the big chair, no? from the tiny chair for a they do a, a, a child Christ. They they. They do, they do these little chairs all the way to the big one. No? In this case, I just put the little table, for example. No? In the beginning, I don't change totally their making. No? Maybe later I do that. But yeah, the ideas, the, you need to build up your ideas. No? It's not like they emerge like randomly. You need to nurture, you need to eat, you need to produce, you need to search, you need to, you know, and then you kind of, get hooked to something that can boost you for the next couple of years. I don't think, I don't think like one, I think the first research give me maybe 20 projects, no? It's not like one project per, per study, no? But maybe that's, that's a way to answer, I don't know. Yeah, no, I definitely see that in, um, in a lot of your work and how um, much of it's kind of evolving from some of the things that you really brought up in the very beginning of your lecture here. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. I think we've got another question here. Um, how does, and this was, relates to another question we've got, um, but how, how does your idea of sedimentation apply to your current work with exhibition design? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I all, I don't know, I, I, it's much more subtle maybe that I think I start working very early on the projects. It's not like I find the project, the answer of the project very fast. So I kind of play a little bit with the idea of sedimentation in the way that I'm the river, you know, I'm the river that I move in things. And then we, we are like, I, for example, when we do exhibition, we build the 3D model of whatever museum we will host, we will host the exhibition. And then we work kind of a database way because there are, for example, because it's archived, maybe there are a hundred documents. No, I cannot do a little model. We need to download every, every piece, their own size. I don't participate in that. The, the uh, Eric, Eric 
Lopez worked with me seven years. He's a very talented architect from UNAM and is part of the team. And Cristobal uh, Garcia as well have like five years with me both. So we are kind of the team. And then we have a, a building team that is, is kind of collaboration with our team, but they have their own independency. But re regarding again, sedimentation, uh, I, I mentioned this because it's not like I take a very, very radical decision towards design because we may build the, the space, download all the pieces, sometimes sculpture, painted, and then I'm enter and see how these things are, are behaving inside. No? When they give me a checklist of an art pieces, it's, a, it's, a, an, it's an Excel with pieces, with pictures of this size. Every, every one of the same size. When I put it in the space, I see a big, you know, the real size, how they are playing between each other inside, actually. I'm not deciding, I'm not deciding anything yet. And just moving these things, you know, just talking, that's my sedimentation process. I, we don't really take like that, like a statement design in the beginning. I think this arrive, arrive to just, if you keep moving the project, you can keep, uh, how you say, pe, pe, you know, give layers of layers. Um, in, and in that way, maybe I feel like we behave like this river that I just keep moving the things and then subtle, subtly we arrive to the design. But it's not like I'm making a new gesture, of, no? In, in particular, in, in exhibition projects, no? Because really the museum that holds that experience is the main one of the important part, the space, no? and then the piece itself. So I think I put both things together and then we, as the river, we start moving, moving things and we start finding the, the, the project, just making, 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 making experiments, experiments, or you know, tested, tested, tested. And then we, we consolidate a, a particular decision. No? But yeah, maybe that's a little more metaphorical, but kind of is the way of, of working. From that segmentation, I will say, you know, the process to, to get consolidated, you can, you can build something that is a very particular entity that has a very much a personality as a unit, or the idea of that that unit can expand to a system, no? like the stable system. So, so I think that idea, the idea like is not, not a modernist approach in which if I cut the project in half, they don't die, they can reconfigure it. No? So, and then towards sustainability, I realized it's better for the museums to keep the infrastructure for a couple of years, instead of just doing something like it's very uh, sustainable and throw it in the end of the, the, the exhibition. No? So I try these, these tables and things, they, they find a different life in the museum. No? They, they survive a couple of years later. And you know, for me, that's, that's the way I found some kind of sustain, sustainability in the process. No? Yeah, that's great. I'm definitely seeing um, how you were saying earlier in your presentation, talking about the the consolidation and the accumulation through time. And yeah, it definitely seems like you're you're still taking that approach, um, even with these larger um, exhibition projects. Um, we have another question in the chat here. Um, mm -hmm from a student who's asking, you talked about the body. In mm -hmm. what way have you interpreted the body from the beginning of your first projects to your current work? Also by body, do you mean as physical entities or does the body also represent a body of work? No, I was talking about physically the body. Um, <laughs> and now I didn't present a, that much of those projects, but we have projects in which the tables have cuts in which you can go through it, no? or, or all these little units in which I can put walls and put the video so you can see the video standing up. But for me, it's kind of a dance. It, if I put you laying down seeing a video, I feel like you will be much more relaxed in the exhibition. You know, museum context have this very stiff, kind of sophisticated, I say, they be, you need to behave like if you are in a bank or if you are in a church, no? So how to break that? 
And I think the only way to break it is to put your body in a different situation, to lay it down, to make you see, to make you touch. I don't, I'm not in the like push the bottom, push the bottom, push the bottom, but you know, use the body in the difference. You can lay down here, you can sit there. So I all the, always when we build something, we think in that in that personal space that your body will will be housed in one on, or another corner of this furniture space. No, so that's the way I'm I'm working with the body in a very much micro scale in which I invite one person or, or in this kind of unit in which two or three can go in and in a different way, just forcing you using your body just in a little different way that normally you, would, you shouldn't use in the bank or in the church. You can't sit in the church in this floor. You can't scream, you can't jump. I don't know, how do you break these little patterns of like the politics of the museum space no and and i think give you this this these uh little hooks and these little cocoons without saying anything just your body is reading that different different approach to the space no and and i we are keep using that huh? yeah great um well there's i think that really relates really well to um, a lot of what we hear at New School. I think one of um, our um, slogans is, you know, human centered by design. So it's great to see that incorporated in um, what we're seeing from you. Um, a question that I think we always like to end on, um, if that's all right, is mm -hmm. um, kind of centered around students. Um, and it seems like you've gotten you've gone through quite a path in your architectural career where you've um, you've had such a variety of scales and work and you've you know you've done the traditional um, building and then architecture you've done furniture and um, and then now you're you're working a lot in um, exhibition spaces and I just wanted to ask what what's some advice that you would offer to architecture students um, or design students in that regard as well, since we are uh, architecture and design school um, moving forward? Well, um, well, I studied architecture because I, all, I was, since I have memory involved in art in some way, really, no? And I studied architecture just to don't start art, basically. But really, architecture gives you a, a lot of very, very helpful, interesting tools, no? Theory, theory tools, technical tools, conceptual tools, building process tools. So all those tools, I don't think all the architects need to uh, end in doing buildings, no? I think just the, the discipline itself uh, gives you a lot of, a lot of space to you know, to develop whatever you want to develop, no? So, um, in my experience, uh, really helping me try to, for example, understand my context, no? To begin with. And that gave me uh, many years of, uh, of imagination of projects, no? So I will, I will push towards what are you interested in, no? You are not totally interested in building. Maybe you will build another kind of thing, no? But how you how you go there? You need to be very sincere sincere with what you feel, and you know, and and uh, be be very perceptive, you know, of what you want to do, no? So the problem is just follow this like the discipline is is very 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 specific, but I think give us the possibility to expand to very different scenarios. I ended, I, I think I mentioned the art in the beginning because I ended doing kind of a mix between architecture and within the arts, no? Even though I don't consider what I do as, as art, the objects, perhaps the whole thing is an art project for us, but 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 I don't, I don't know how I find it 
I ended doing this in between, no? that I'm kind of happy about it. Like I'm, I'm enjoying this. So the question will be what, what are, what do you want to do? No, what do you like it most? What is you, what more excite you? Like you need to follow something like will boost you for, for several years, no? Because if you find, you go towards a thesis that will get bored you in three months, you are, you, you will not go far, no? So I will even choosing the right subject. We can, we can put the thesis as, as example, not choosing the right thesis is you need to choose something like you really are passionate. Like you think you really want to do it, no? And maybe you finish the thesis, but you keep, you keep doing that, no? So it's not just to finish the school, it's to, the school is giving you, no? It's the new school is giving you the possibility to, to to explore whatever you really want to explore, no? And you can, you can uh, distort, this, make a distortion of the discipline towards wherever you want to go to. But you need to define that. It's hard to say there is no one road, no? And I think it's very much to be very aware of what you like and uh, be very sincere of what you should explore, no? Even though you don't know what will end it happening. But at least you will know, like you will, you will, be, you will be fine pushing that for several, several years, no? Even when you finish school, because it's something like you are passionate about it. I think that will, that will be the, the, the most like, like clear or, or like uh, helpful recommendation. I, I will, I will say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, that was. A great note to end on. Um, we appreciate you coming um, and speaking with us tonight. Um, I enjoyed myself. I got a couple pages of notes here <laughs> to go cool. home with. Yeah. So um, thank you again for um, coming to speak with us. And thank you to everyone who attended. Um, so have a, have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for, to be here. Bye-bye. Yeah. We're still here, no? And we're still alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Um... Is someone I'm here. It's just Daniela and Elena in there. So I think I can talk again. Thank you so much, Giacomo. Sure. Sometimes I just think I will never end. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no, thank you very much for the invitation. I really appreciate it.